Hello my buddies, welcome to a video with Kim Tech. My name is Kim. I was researching something regarding Intune a few weeks ago and came across a post on Reddit by M. Milkerson. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. If not, I apologize. Anyways, M. Milkerson linked a very well-written and detailed article that he wrote about what actually happens underneath the hood during autopilot. I think it's a wonderful article. If you have the time to read it, I'd recommend you checking it out. Just make sure you have your snacks and drinks ready because it's a long read. However, if you're setting up autopilot for the first time, you may be confused on how the top level setup would be and how everything is interconnected. And that's what I'll be sharing with you today. We'll focus specifically on intro joined window computers for this video. As a disclaimer, we will not be diving into the fine details of the configs, but more of a general concept for anyone who are new to Autopilot. So if you have an intermediate or advanced knowledge about Autopilot, this video may not be for you, but feel free to drop any info that I may have missed to help our beginner viewers. Thank you in advance. First, Let's define what is Windows Autopilot. Microsoft states on their website that Autopilot is a collection of technologies used to set up and pre-configure new devices, getting them ready for productive use. Okay, how I see Autopilot is really just a computer imaging system that pulls your images from the cloud, specifically from your Intune configurations, and set them onto the computer that are registered to your tenant. I don't know if my definition made it muddier or clearer for you, but let me share with you what it would really look like from the admin standpoint. As an admin, you first need to determine if your environment is going to be a hybrid, so cloud with an on-premises domain, or enter join, which is cloud only with no domain controller. So what is it gonna be for your autopilot computers? And by the way, if you plan to eventually go fully cloud, then you can have your autopilot devices be on enter join while the existing computers stayed in their current hybrid situation and slowly change them out when they are due for replacement or migration time. It's worth noting that a hybrid join environment requires more configs. Next, set up the original equipment manufacturer or OEM, pretty much the equipment vendor. So set up the OEM to register autopilot devices on behalf of your organization. Of course, you can manually register the devices to autopilot if you have at least the Intune administrator intro role. Subsequently, set up your Windows autopilot Intune enrollment. In order for Windows Autopilot to work, devices need to be able to enroll in Intune automatically. This can be configured on Microsoft Entra under Mobility. Next, if you're going to allow users to join devices on Entra ID, you will need to enable the settings on Microsoft Entra under Device Settings. Moving on to creating a device group. This is pretty much where you would create a security group to target devices for specific configurations, such as what policies to apply to a device and what applications to install on it. Although you can create an assigned group where the devices are manually added to the group and are static. I would highly recommend creating a dynamic group instead because the devices can be automatically added to the group based on the defined rules. This will help reduce the steps you have to do during autopilot and make the process more automated. Plus, adding a large amount of devices in manually via an assigned group would be impractical. The most common type of dynamic device group when using Windows Autopilot is a device group that contains all Windows Autopilot devices. Such group has the following syntax on the screen here. You can set the rule on the dynamic group to use the group tag identifier to help easily assign the devices. I'll talk about group tag a bit more later in the user assignment of the autopilot device section. However, I want to briefly mention it here that the rule syntax will be something like the following, where corp is my group tag for our corporate office computers. 
once you've created the group, whether it's an assigned group or dynamic, just be sure to assign it to the appropriate configuration profiles, compliance policy, app profiles, app deployment, and any other Intune configs that these computers are supposed to be assigned to. After setting up the device group, let's look at setting up the enrollment status page or ESP. The main feature of the enrollment status page is to display progress and current status to the end user while the device is being set up and enrolled via the autopilot process. The other main feature of ESP is to block a user from signing in and using the device until all required policies and applications are installed. Multiple ESP profiles can be created with different settings and assigned appropriately based on different needs and scenarios. The enrollment status page has two phases, device ESP or user ESP. Device ESP is the portion of the ESP that runs during the OOB process and applies device policies and installs device applications. User ESP, this portion of the ESP is what sets up the user account, applies user policies, and installs user applications. Next, we would create and assign the pre-provisioned Microsoft Entrajoin Autopilot profile. The Autopilot profile specifies how the device is configured during Windows setup and what is shown during the out-of-box experience, or OOBE. When an admin creates an autopilot profile for the pre provision scenario, devices with this autopilot profile are associated with the user enrolling the device. User credentials are required to enroll the device. The difference between an autopilot pre provision Microsoft Entra join and an autopilot Microsoft Entra hybrid join is that the pre provision Microsoft Entra join scenario only joins Microsoft Entra ID during autopilot. The Microsoft Entra hybrid join scenario joins both an on-premises domain and Microsoft Entra ID during autopilot, hence the name hybrid. With the autopilot profile, you can determine the language of the computer, whether to show the Microsoft software license terms, privacy settings, and etc. It's the preliminary screens during the Windows computer setup. This is also where you can set the computer name template. Unfortunately, the options for the template are very limited, either with serial number or just random numbers. After creating and assigning the pre provisioned Microsoft Android Join Autopilot profile, you can assign the Autopilot device to a user. This step is optional. This is so only the user who owns the device, or at least has been assigned to that particular computer, can sign in and use it. If you have a user-driven deployment and the device gets delivered to a location different than the one you're working out of, then you don't really have another way to ensure the actual owner is the only one that can sign in. That's where assigning the user to the autopilot device comes in handy. Also here, you can assign a group tag to a device once the deployment profile has been created and assigned to the dynamic security group that uses the particular group tag in its rule syntax. Group tag can determine the device enrollment profile, configuration profiles, install apps, security policies, and compliance policy. Now, when these devices are powered on, each will be enrolled based on the settings of their assigned autopilot deployment profiles. Just make sure that you've confirmed that the status of the group tag has been successfully assigned before turning on the computer or else whatever settings that you've assigned to that group tag may not apply. Now, right before the user turns on the computer and sign in, you can go through the technician flow to pre-provision the computer. This pretty much means you are prepping the computer by running through the first two phases of the enrollment status page, which are device preparation and device setup. Although the allow pre-provision deployment setting may be enabled under the autopilot deployment profile, you technically don't need to go through the technician flow if it's not your standard practice. Finally, the device is in the user's hands and they are ready to turn it on. If you've previously taken the steps of the technician flow, 
then the user would only need to turn on the computer, sign in, and go through the account setup. If you didn't pre-provision the computer before handing it or shipping it to the user, then the computer will go through the first two phases of the enrollment status page, which are device preparation and device setup. And along with that, the user will also have to sit through the account setup, which of course will take longer for the user. Now to help you understand the flow of a Windows Autopilot process better, let's do a role-playing game. Let's pretend that you are a computer. So you can understand from the computer standpoint, yes, imagine you're a computer. I think it would be really helpful for you to understand this when you're troubleshooting if you know which stage the problem is at. Have any of you guys ever watched the Magic School Bus? I really loved that show growing up. Miss Frizzle is so cool. Anyway, the kids always take a field trip to understand how things work. Like that one time they explore Arnold's digestive system or the other time they went to the desert or another time they learn about water and the whole water process. Anyway, imagine that you are a computer Better yet, a laptop. Just make sure it's a Windows laptop since we're focusing on Windows Entra Join Computer. Anyway, imagine you're a Windows laptop that was just purchased by a company with its approved Microsoft vendor or reseller. So first, you, the computer, is registered to autopilot under the company's tenant to enroll into Intune. As mentioned earlier, Either the vendor registers the device when the computer is purchased, or the admin can manually register the device to autopilot. Second, if group tag is part of the standard setup, then the admin would assign it at this time before you, the computer, is turned on, or at least before the internet screen. It's worth noting that only one group tag can be applied per device. You cannot have more than one group tag for one computer. Think about it this way. Your group tag tells the computer which device profile it should take, which potentially includes the computer name it should have. So having more than one group tag won't work. After that, if the company has a technician flow procedure, then the technician would run through the device ESP, including device preparation and device setup, which again is optional. During the device preparation, the computer will go through the join process Entra or hybrid, and download any configurations that the computer is a part of, whether it's by association of a group tag or because of any policy set for all devices. Now, if you, the computer, has been shipped directly to the end user from the device vendor where the technician flow didn't take place, then the user will need to sit through the join process and device profile configs and policies to run through first before the user profile configs and policy. If the technician flow was completed ahead of time, then that user simply needs to turn it on and sign in during autopilot. And again, you, the computer, will magically load the user's profile, which is ready for them to use, making your user oh so happy. If the user is using Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi sucks, well, <laughs> it won't feel very magical for them and they probably won't be very happy. Anyway, uh, jokes aside, they would just have to wait for you, Mr. or Ms. Computer, to check into Intune via an internet connection, which would pull down the user profile, user configs, policies, and or user apps if the technician flow has already been accomplished. That's really it from a computer standpoint. Of course, if you're interested in my consultation on how to help you set this up for your organization, please feel free to contact me and we can discuss further on how I can help. Next, I'm going to share some noteworthy tips with you. Tip one, if you encounter an app installation error on the OOBE and it doesn't allow you to move forward, then your setup probably has the block device used until all apps and profiles are installed, enabled, or set to yes under the enrollment status page. To fix this, you can either set this to no or fix the apps with the issue. Tip number two, even if you have the allow pre-provision deployment setting enabled for a technician flow, it's not mandatory. This means that even if your IT team didn't go through the technician flow, the user will not have any problem turning on the computer and running through the setup themselves. Tip number three, 
If you didn't see your company branding for the user to sign in and need to reset the OOBE process, simply press Shift plus F10 on your keyboard to open up the command prompt, then type in the command that you see here on the screen. This will take you back to the region language screen. Tip number four. Well, this is not really a tip, but more of an FYI of a recent rollout from Microsoft of their new Windows Update experience, which means that the device will automatically be updated to the latest version and security build during OOBE, which also means that the OOBE process now is going to be a bit longer or a lot longer depending on your connection because of the updates. If you want to bypass this for whatever reason, I've included an article below by Mr. Melkerson again on how to make that happen. Tip number five. This last tip is going to sound so obvious, but in case you are new to the whole autopilot process, which is totally cool, but please make sure that the computer has internet connection, either via landline or Wi-Fi, because without internet connection, you will not be able to finish the autopilot process because the computer would not be able to download the image from your Intune configs. Anyway, hope you all find this video helpful. If you do, please click the thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it down below. Thank you again for watching this video and have yourself a nice day or night wherever you are, my buddies. Until next time, bye.